All right, five, six is simply adding and subtracting rational expressions. So guys, literally, here's what we're doing. This is why I said this is so easy. This is what we're doing today. But just making it a little tougher because we're using variables. Okay, you know this, you learned this in like fourth grade. If I take a half, or like let's say, I'm sorry, a quarter, and I add to that three quarters, I end up with how many quarters? Four quarters, literally. This is what we're doing today, but with variable expressions. So what's the key? We need a, we need a what do we call this? Good, a common denominator. Preferably the least common denominator, but a common denominator nonetheless. So here are simple steps. The steps actually make a lot of sense. You don't really need to memorize them, they're more just intuition. And I guarantee you a lot of you would do this automatically. Okay? If you want to find a common denominator, start by factoring over the denominators. And let me show you an example real quick. Take a look at this, please. Um, okay. What's the common denominator? Quick. 24. 24 is the common denominator. 8 times 3, 12 times 2. Both give me 24. Now, what do you notice though about this? How could you get that without actually seeing that? Well, the first thing students sometimes do is multiply these numbers together. If you didn't do that, factoring them actually gives you the answer easy. We have 4 times 2, we have 4 times 3. Which factor is common in both? What's missing over here and that's over here? A 3, what's missing over here? So technically, just multiply this by 2, well, what do you get? 24. Multiply this by 3, what do you get? 24. So the common denominator is simply factoring things and putting here what's missing and here what's missing so that the denominators look identical now. And what do you get? You get the common denominator, which in turn is 24. So you then multiply the top by 3 here and the top by 2 over here. But this is really the process that you learned when you were a kid. Whether you learned it this way with prime factorization or not, I mean, it's six and one half dozen. If you can do it, fine. What I'm trying to show you, though, is that factoring things works this way. Up here with this method we're going to use with variable terms, you need to factor. Is that clear? If you don't factor, these problems are almost not impossible, but they're ridiculous to do. It will cut down your time dramatically. So pretty much you do exactly what we did here. You factor and then put whatever's missing in each term and then combine. So let's go to the next problem to show this. So we start by factoring our denominators. The one on the left can't really be factored. I'm going to leave it for a moment. I mean, I could factor it into like 3 times 3 times x times x if I wanted to show the prime factorization. What would the right one factor into? What would the right one factor into? Go ahead, Luke. Would everybody agree with that? 3x, x plus 1? Redistributed, you get the same thing. What is common in both denominators? What is common in both, Max? Right here and right here. So as a result, we can say that neither of those terms are missing. Agreed? Yet, yet, take a look please. There's a 3x here that's extra, that's not accounted for over here. So tack on another 3x here and put it up here also. Now, on this side, you need to look up to see this. On this side, there's an x plus 1, but it's missing over here. So on this side, let's tack on an x plus 1. And up here, put an x plus 1. And now the denominator is common throughout. The denominator we have would be 9x squared x plus 1. And leave it in the factored form, please. The denominator, go back to again, right? This is a 9 right here. This is x squared right here. And then in blue, we have x plus 1. That's the same on both sides. Leave it factored because the numerator might have something that could cancel with it. Let's look at the numerator now. What does this become right here, please? Take a look. Right here, what is this? 7x plus 7, and this is? So it does no common terms, right? So it's 3x squared plus 7x plus 7. Can I go any further? I can try to factor the numerator. I could try to factor, but I'm looking at the discriminant and I'm saying this can't be factored because the roots of this, they're imaginary. See what I'm doing? See what I'm doing? I'm using chapter 7 right now and saying, hey, the discriminant of this, uh, that's going to be a negative number. b squared minus 4ac, that's absolutely negative. So as a result, this can't be factored. 
So don't even sit there and waste your time on the numerator. So many people would go, let me try AC method. Try to discriminate, it's much easier. The AC method takes a while with something like this. You gotta worry about 21. Okay, I mean, maybe not a while, but it's more direct to go with the discriminant. So this is your result. You're done with this problem. It cannot be simplified any further. We're going to do more example, and then this is just practice at this point. The steps are all you need to think about. Factor, see what's missing, combine. Literally, it's, it's pretty much three steps. I think I broke it into four. Yeah, I then said, you know, simplify if possible at the end. We got to know step four there. So factoring my denominator here. Help me out real quick. Bridge, the first one, what do you got? You add x squared to the one on the left. So, but just tell me what the fact, sorry, factor at first, the denominators. Uh, Give me the factors. Two bracket, x minus one. Okay, you got the other one also? And, um, Probably going to get something repeated. X, uh, x minus, x plus four, x minus one. X minus one is right. X plus, x minus four. X minus, x plus four. You're close. Help me out. Minus three. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you, you were doing it backwards. You know what I'm saying? You were doing the four and the one adding up to three and then the four and one times in here. Remember, multiply these two to give you this one. Uh, so what do we have? And, and by the way, Bridge, the reason I was pointing this out, take a look. There's usually something that repeats itself in these kinds of problems or else the problem gets extremely lengthy if not. So there's the repeated part. So I could say over here we're missing a two. Right? That two is where? Where's that two? Here it is right here. That two we have to put here and here. Now over here there's an x minus three and that's missing over here. Make sure in the numerator you do this please. You need to have brackets around everything because you're multiplying expressions. Okay, you're multiplying the entire quantity x plus two. This entire numerator x plus two is being multiplied by this entire thing. So you have to have parentheses. Write yourself a note if you didn't do that immediately. In the numerator, I get, when I, fact, when I multiply this out, x squared minus x minus 6. Now, watch what I'm going to do over here. This is minus the entire right-hand numerator, which is really negative 4x minus 2, all over what we leave in the factor form. Please ask a question. If you have any questions right now, I multiply out the first numerator to give me this. I'm subtracting this problem, so I have to put subtract the entire numerator so the whole thing is in parentheses after distributing the two to both of those. The denominator that is common is written below. George. Well, like, I, I know this is like sort of like defeat the purpose, but can you just, why can't you just like... Distribute the negative here? Uh, no, I was going to say like... Here? No, first part of the Here. Yeah. Wouldn't these cancel out? Yeah. Well, of course they would, just like these would cancel out. But why would you cancel them out? Didn't we put them there for a reason? Yeah. We put what's blue there. That was the thing that was missing. So yes, these cancel for sure, but if we cancel, then we get back to the original problem, right? So this is the thing that we added to the problem so that these denominators would be the same. So this denominator was originally in black right here. And it was missing this blue 2 that was over here as a 2. So I put the 2 there, and if I put it there, I put it up here. So I'm not going to cancel these right here because of that. It becomes like a, you're going back, you're going in a circle, then, right? Yeah. Okay, and it's, 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 it's instinctual to see something that repeats and cancel it. But in this process, we're introducing something that is needed to repeat. Okay? Good question. So we now subtract this entire numerator. So watch what I'm going to do, obviously. Make this a plus, and make these all pluses. So you're subtracting the negatives, so just make them all positives. Combine like terms in the numerator, we get x squared plus 3x minus 4 all over the denominator. Does anything cancel? Can I factor the numerator? What do I get when I factor it? Yeah, bridge. That was the one you said before. Now, now it appears. Isn't that funny? Uh, and the x minus 1s end up canceling. Remember, only factors can cancel. So what's left behind is left behind. This is a perfect SAT question. It seems lengthy, but when practiced several times, these types of problems 
would take you honestly as long as it takes you to factor. Your speed of factoring indicates your speed on this problem. Think about it. The whole problem is about factoring, really, right? So if you can factor well and you can factor quickly, you can process through this problem, you know, at a good pace. On the SAT, the answer might be given as this, by the way, which is obviously the same thing, just distributing the two in the denominator. Okay? So you might have to modify the form at times. Please take a look at this over the weekend. You have five, six homework. It's a lot of practice stuff. And then you have the six questions from AE. Okay, it's a decent amount of work, so I would not wait till Sunday night to do all of this. Okay, maybe think about tonight as a school night and do one of the homeworks, save the other for the weekend.